Hi, this is Stephen Roselle, my specialist at Autodesk, and I'm going to spend 10 minutes or so going over the new node editor in the My 2012 Service Advantage Pack. So the Service Advantage Pack, otherwise known as SAP, was released a few weeks ago, and it's kind of an intermediate release that's available to subscription customers. And uh, one of the key features in, in this release was the node editor. So before I get into the node editor, I want to talk a little bit about the history of editing nodes in Maya. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the, uh, the hypergraph. Now, most people have used Maya have heard about the hypergraph. What the hypergraph is, is a couple of different things. One is you can view it in a hierarchy mode, which basically gives you a scene graph, essentially, of everything uh, as far as groups and nodes transforms um, in your, your scene. You can also view the node editor, sorry, the hypergraph in a connection view. And this shows you what is also called the dependency graph. Now the dependency graph is uh, kind of the core of Maya. And I'm sure everybody has come across the dependency graph. Most people know what it is. It's basically a series of nodes with connections between them. However, this is a really crude representation of those nodes and connections. It's very uh, kind of 90s looking, for lack of a better word. So. Before we get to the node editor, I want to talk about one other thing, and that is in order to make and break connections in here, you have to use a secondary editor. So let's say that I wanted to take the transform of the cube, which is here, and I wanted to connect that to the, the create node of the polytorus. Now, the create node, just so you know, is the node that basically allows you to drive things like the divisions of your objects, if I wanted to increase or decrease the subdivisions, uh, for instance. So you can technically create these two nodes. You can create any arbitrary nodes, but you have to basically drag and drop one onto another. And then by doing that, if I can actually grab this, there we go. By doing that, then uh, you basically bring up a second editor, and this is called the connection editor. And this will give you a list of everything that you could connect from the cube transform to everything that you could connect to the poly input, or rather the uh, poly create node for the torus. So this is, uh, again, an interface that's been around for a long time. It's very, very kind of simplistic and crude and, and a little bit cumbersome. So the node editor actually allows you to kind of bypass this. One other thing that I wanted to talk about, though, is the hypershade. Now, the hypershade is essentially just a fancy version of the hypergraph. The hypershade basically is the interface that allows you to edit shading networks. So if I wanted to apply a texture to a shader, I would do it over here. Right now, what I'm seeing is the actual shape nodes and transform nodes that I was seeing in the hypergraph. So what the hypershade is, is basically a fancy version of the hypergraph. You'll see I have the exact same nodes. I have my transform nodes, I have my create nodes, and I have my shape nodes, which are the mesh nodes, and my shading engine, which allows me to connect all of my shaders. So you'll see that I have the exact same interface here. So if I take a, a closer look at the hypershade, you'll see that I have those exact same nodes. They're just slightly more elegant uh, in the sense that they have a slightly more visual icon. But as far as structurally and behaviorally, it's essentially the same thing. So what the node editor is, is basically kind of the next generation view of these two interfaces. So the node editor basically allows you to see all these same nodes, but in a much more uh, modern way. So let's pull in a little bit, and here you'll see the same nodes that I just showed before. Again, I've got my three transforms, my cube, torus, and sphere transforms. And I've got my create nodes, which allow me to define uh, the creation of my objects. And I've got my shape nodes, which are the mesh nodes. And I've got my shading group nodes, same exact nodes, but slightly more, or actually quite a bit more elegant visual display of these nodes. And I can take this further, and I can actually expand and contract these nodes to view all of the inputs and outputs that are associated with this directly on the node. So this is where the connection editor comes in. This allows us to bypass the connection editor. Now one thing I want to point out though is that another benefit to the node editor is that the node editor is independent of your scene selection. So notice if I go over here to my hypershade or my hypergraph, if I were to click a node, as soon as I click that node, it overrides the selection of whatever I have in my scene. Now that's true if it's a texture or if it's a light or if it's a, a, a poly object. You'll notice up here in the node editor, if I do that, if I click or double click, it will select the, the attributes, basically expose the attributes, but it will not override the scene selection. So I can keep my, my cube selected here, and I can select any of these nodes, and I'll see the attributes for those nodes, for instance, the polytorus, but I won't override the scene selection. So that's important 
been quite useful because generally you just want to access the attributes. You don't necessarily want to override your scene selection. That is an option. You can turn it off, but it's on by default. So getting back to the kind of heart of this, ultimately what I want to be able to do is make and break connections. So I'm going to pull this off to the side and I'm going to simplify my UI here a little bit and we'll find what I want to work with. So I'm going to use the cube here as my kind of primary object and then I'm going to take something like the sphere. I'll use the transform node of the sphere rather. So I've got the transform of the cube and I'll take the transform of the sphere which is right there and then I'll go in and I'll take the create node of the polytorus. So these are the three nodes that I want to work with. So what I'm going to do is pen those nodes, and I can either do them individually like so, or I can do it directly as a group from my tool shelf up here. So by pinning those, I've kind of locked their placement into the node editor. Now if I were to click this erase or clear button, everything else will get cleared out of the interface so that I can focus on just these nodes. So let's pull these off to the side, and now we'll begin to make and break connections. Again, I can take all these nodes, and I can expand to show all of the associated connections, and then I can begin to start to connect inputs and outputs. So the right is output, the left is input, of course. So what I want to do is take the translate of the cube, and I want to feed that into the scale of the sphere. As soon as I do that, you'll notice the sphere disappears. What that means is that because my cube is at 0, 0, 0, the scale of the sphere gets set to 0, 0, 0. Now if I were to take that cube and start to move it around, you can see that it actually will drive the scale of the cube depending on where that is in my, my coordinate system. So another thing I can do is I can connect, instead of just connecting you know, simple vectors to vectors, I can break out the individual, for instance, channels or the individual float values uh, within these vectors. So with translate, I have an x, y, z. So what I could do, for instance, is I could actually take that and I could feed it into the subdivisions of my torus. So let's just go in here and I'll expand translate and I'll take translate x and I'll feed that into subdivision axis and I'll take translate y and I'll feed that into subdivision height. So now when I, oops, wrong one, now when I move this either in y or x, what you'll notice is that as I move along x it changes the subdivisions that way. If I move along y it changes the subdivisions that way. So again I'm driving translate, or rather subdivision values with a translate. So nothing here is new. This is all Maya 101 stuff. So the dependency graph uh, and these nodes and connections have been in Maya since the beginning, basically. It's just a more elegant way of accessing them and getting to them and connecting and unconnecting them. So let's take this a step further. Let's say I wanted to actually connect something completely different. So you can also load shading networks in here as well. So right now I'm dealing with basic transforms and creation nodes. I'm going to take my texture that's associated with this and I'm going to drop this into my window here. Now with a texture oftentimes you want to see a, uh, a clearer view of what your texture looks like. So if you right click on this I can actually go in and I can toggle the swatch size for the texture. It will expand that to allow me to see more detail in the texture which is generally what you want with a texture. But in general I can access the, t the parameters of the texture in the same way that I could access the parameters of my transform and shape nodes. So for instance, let's say that I wanted to drive the color of my texture with the translate of my cube. I'll use that same translate value. I'll drop that onto the U color and now we'll pull back a little bit and you can see here now as I begin to drive this transform you can see how the color begins to update. Let's actually expand my uh, view here a little bit. So you can see I go over here, he turns yellow. I go down here, he's going to turn kind of uh, magenta. Let's actually turn off the wireframe. Go over here, he's going to turn blue. Up here, he's going to turn teal. And you get the basic idea. So let's take this again a step further and let's say that I wanted to drive the opposite color, the, the, uh, this gray color that's in here, the U color, or uh, rather the V color, with the inverse. So one thing we can do in the node editor, which is really handy, is instead of finding our nodes somewhere else or going like to the create node window to drop in nodes, what I can do is just hit my tab key and that will bring up a little field here and I can type in the name of a node. So I could type in, for instance, reverse. As soon as I type in reverse, it'll give me a list of all the possible nodes that I could use that have the word reverse in them. Reverse curve, reverse surface, or in this case, just a simple reverse node. That will create the node right there on the spot, and now I can begin to use this as a node in my graph. So let's go in here and say, for instance, I wanted to expand the inputs and outputs. So I'm going to take that same translate value, feed it into the input of my reverse. That's going to reverse the, the XYZ values. And I'm going to take the output, feed that into the, the V color. So now when I go in and begin to edit these, you can see now I get green and magenta. I get yellow and blue. I get red and kind of teal. And I have the actual kind of opposite um, values that I would expect. So 
Uh, that pretty much wraps it up. A um, couple other things to point out in here. I have the ability to expand and contract all these simultaneously. So for instance, if I just wanted to collapse all these and just view them in their single node mo mode, I can. Or I can actually go in and I can view in a fully expanded mode and that shows me all of the possible connections that I could make. Or I could use this middle mode, which actually is a concise view of exactly what is already connected. So it only shows me the attributes or the, the values or channels, however you want to look at it, that have already uh, been connected. So there's other things we can do, for instance, creating bookmarks. If I wanted to arrange these in a specific way, I can create a bookmark that uh, will remember that arrangement. But uh, in general, I think I've covered uh, all of the basics. So hopefully you get a better idea of how you can take advantage of the note editor in the future uh, for doing kind of just fundamental uh, core things that you would always do in Maya. And again, the note editor is only available in the Maya 2012 Service Advantage Pack. Thanks for your time.